We also see that uh, uh, it's threatening the economy in terms of trade policy. Uh, we've already seen uh, um, the uh, uh, Obama administration announce they want to, uh, they're going to put a 35% tariff increase on uh, Chinese tires. Um, but uh, um, uh, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, and as The Economist uh, said, uh, uh, The Economist magazine said in September, workers of, in all sorts of other industries that have suffered at the hands of Chinese competitors will now be emboldened to seek the same kind of protection from a president who has given into the, uh, into the unions at the first opportunity, right? But the problem isn't just errors of commission like that. It's also errors of omission. We've got other free trade uh, agreements sitting uh, um, uh, unratified at this point, uh, Colombia, South Korea, um, some other places like that. Um, and it takes political capital to push free trade. So it's not just putting up new trade barriers, it's the fact that we won't be knocking down uh, old trade barriers at the behest of, uh, of, um, of uh, labor unions. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, the uh, employee free, uh, uh, we talked about the Employee Free Choice Act. Uh, which is designed to uh, increase unionization. One recent study estimates um, by uh, a couple of economists at Princeton estimates that a company's stock market value falls by $40,500 for each unionized worker that they employ. And the only way, and I think we've heard it today, I think it's implicit in uh, um, what some of the panelists have said today, the, only, I mean, the, the, the model here, the dream is the, the, the 60s, the 70s, right? And we know what this dream of corporate and union partnership looks like, and it's stagnation, right? The only way we can increase uh, unionization under these facts, and the only way we can drive up wages artificially under these facts and that sort of thing, is basically in a system of stagnation that protects big corporations from competition and protects, uh, uh, protects labor unions, and they engage in what economists call rent sharing. Rent sharing where both the big corporations and the big uh, unions uh, can, uh, uh, can both be enriched at the expense of consumers. Um, let me just uh, close with, because uh, um, I think I'm just about out of time, if I'm not already out of time. Um, <clears throat> my final thought is my, my concern to the long-term threat to freedom and free enterprise. Um, uh, as we all know, President Obama taught at uh, University of Chicago Law School during the heyday of law and economics. Um, it seems pretty <coughs> clear he didn't learn any economics uh, during that time. But it does seem clear that he also learned what uh, economists refer to as public choice uh, uh, in sort of the study of interest groups and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, most of us who work in the field of public choice think of it as a cautionary tale rather than a how-to manual. Uh, but, uh, but he's learned the lesson well, right? And the lesson that President Obama has learned is that fundamentally corporations don't care about capitalism. Corporations care about themselves. And corporations are going to sell out capitalism at the drop of a hat if it enriches their bottom line. And we see it every day now. Big corporations jumping overboard, bailing out on the free enterprise system in order to protect their, uh, their, their own hides. Uh, the, a the AMA rolling over on health care uh, is part of a deal where they can get rid of uh, things, uh, you know, reductions in Medicare spending going forward. The TARP banks rolling over. Citibank rolling over on cram down of, uh, of, of mortgages. Utilities such as PG&E, Exelon, and PNM quitting the Chamber of Commerce over, uh, uh, over uh, um, global warming positions because they want the competitive edge of uh, being able to, com uh, to compete against uh, um, uh, other uh, rivals. It's no coincidence that Enron was a big supporter of the Kyoto Agreement, right? Because Enron was doing renewable energies. They were hailed as a great corporate citizen for their uh, commitment to uh, renewable uh, uh, energy. Um, and perhaps most pernicious at all is the rent extraction or rent extortion this gives rise to. Just President Obama understands how to play off these groups one against the other uh, and bring guys over to use them as a club against the others. And what we're seeing now in GM is that that's a bipartisan effect, right? There's a good article in the Wall Street Journal a week or two ago on the political meddling in GM of, uh, of uh, Republicans and Democrats intervening. They say there's 535 new directors of, uh, of General Motors, right? Intervening to keep car dealerships from being closed down in their district, trying to keep uh, uh, plants open, trying to keep mines open, right? Basically doing it all uh, uh, for, for political ends. And basically the strategy uh, that the Obama administration, I think, has savvily played is, um, and I trust is a good example of this, is basically we have the right to destroy you and you have the right to buy back from us your life uh, is basically the, uh, uh, the model, which is a very different model. Uh, uh, and this is what we call rent extortion in economics. Um, so, uh, um, uh, so I'll break there, and, uh, um, and, and, uh, um, and I guess it's time to move on to questions. <clears throat> uh, 
I want to. I want to say at the outset that I'm deeply d disappointed that, that none of our pan panelists said anything even remotely controversial in their remarks. <laughs> but we now have time for Q&A, so there's still time for them to say something that uh, could uh, uh, get someone's dander up. I I'd uh, like to ask for Q&A and not to put him on the spot, but simply because I know he has to leave. Uh, I'd like the first question to go to Damon, who's uh, got to go in just a minute. So if someone has a question for Damon in particular, uh, why don't we go there? Sorry, no, you had your hand up first, sir. Uh, the question is about uh, productivity and wages and about the imbalance in growing and balance. Uh, and I'm wondering if you could Data. Yeah, it should be on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The data I'm citing is the, is the BLS data. Um, I assume that the BLS data is average productivity. Um, the, uh, the, um, my sense of this issue is that wage productivity is almost always driven uh, by uh, the forces you, you laid out. Right, technology, capital investment. Obviously, there's there are issues about how about how workforces are managed within technological constraints, uh, but those factors are always you know always present. The I think the types of the the types of variations you are referring to, uh, one might see in the types of arguments you're referring to, uh, one might see uh, over time. Uh, those would be relatively short-term phenomenon, whereas the, lo the long-term relationship between, at, between uh, uh, average wages and productivity uh, ought to be tied. And, and the, the, the trends that I'm, referring, that I'm referring to are quite long-term. Now, of course, there's some, there's some, there's some, there's some movement in them. And, there, and, there is the con and there's the complex issue of, of health care that I referred to in, in my um. remarks. Uh, but there's really no getting away from the fact that that wages, that average wages and average productivity were tied for decades, and then they weren't. Uh, and that this seems to be direct. This, together with some tax policy issues, seems to be directly tied to the rise in in, uh, in inequality uh, in, in the United States. Um, and uh, and and as I said earlier, I think it's deeply related, deeply deeply related to the various pressures to sort of. Um, uh, hallucinate income, right? Which we've been doing uh, in recent years. By hallucinate income, I mean people think that by borrowing, uh, by borrowing against inflated assets, that that's income, uh, or by uh, not saving for retirement, that that's income, uh, or the like. That, 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 that these are these are hallucinations. They're they're not they're, uh, they're not real. I've got one more for Damon, and then I know that uh, uh, Harold wants to follow up on that point, but uh, just quickly. So. Uh, Uh, well, let me start off by saying exactly, by being clear about exactly who owns what, okay? Uh, the, the stock in Chrysler that you're referring to is owned by a VEBA trust. It is, it's owned by a trust for the purposes of providing health care to auto worker retirees. It's not owned by the UAW and it's certainly not owned by the FLCIO. Um, so the, the FLCIO doesn't own Chrysler, and so we don't have an opinion about owning Chrysler. Uh, the, but, but, I can, but, but I have a sense of what the UAW thinks, although um, I'm, not, you know, I'm not speaking for them. 